High above the city of Koblenz is Ehrenbreitstein Fortress, and if you approach it as we did from the east, you could easily miss it. It hasn't been missed by the decorators, though, who are busy restoring it to its former glory. There's been a fortress here since about 1129, apparently, but this version dates back to 1828 and was considered to be impregnable. A memorial to German soldiers killed in the two world wars is surprising considering Germans' reluctance to be seen to be glorifying war, but there had to be one somewhere, and why not in one of Europe's biggest and best preserved fortresses. Anyone wishing to take the fortress had to fight their way through a series of formidable defences and avoid being shot at before arriving at the drill ground, the fortress's nerve centre. From here, a stunning view helps to explain why this was such a good place. Unless you wanted to scale a sheer cliff, the only way to take the fortress was from the east. Until, that is, modern warfare with its aerial bombing raids was invented, although in the event Ehrenbreit survived. It's a fine example of Prussian military might, with a conveniently good view of another piece of Prussian bombast, the memorial to Kaiser Wilhelm, perhaps the ultimate Prussian. In total, it's 37 metres, that's 121 feet high, of which 14 metres, or 46 feet, is the statue itself. The plinth shows the imperial eagle triumphing over enemies and subduing snakes, for some reason. The memorial is at Deutsches Eck, German corner, the confluence of the rivers Rhine and Moselle. The Rhine is an important waterway, indeed it's one of the world's busiest, although the arrival of the railways made its impact felt, essentially killing passenger services except for pleasure cruises. From Deutsches Eck you can appreciate the impregnable Ehrenbreitstein fortress from a different angle, but take my advice and put off your visit for a couple of years. Koblenz has the honour of hosting the 2011 National Garden Show, and part of the preparations involves extensive refurbishment of the riverside promenades. You can't move for construction sites, big signboards and scattered barriers. Some of the new constructions are baffling at first sight. Any guesses as to what this thing is? Apparently it's a cable car system, which wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't right next to Koblenz's oldest church, the Basilica of St. Castor, part of the UNESCO Upper Rhine Gorge World Heritage Site. Mind you, Koblenz has long had a fondness for ugly buildings where no ugly buildings should be. But to understand why, let us proceed to the historic column. This work of art symbolizes Koblenz's 2,000-year history. It's founding by the Romans, Franconian rule, rule by the Archbishop of Trier, 
the Crusades, the economic boom of the 13th to 16th centuries, the Thirty Year War and the witch hunts, the French Revolution, Koblenz under Prussian rule. Near the top is the destruction of the city in World War II, when 87% of the city was destroyed. Modern Koblenz rises from the smoke and ashes. Presumably the whole plaza here was once gorgeous, but not anymore. And that's Koblenz for you. You can find here and there a few exquisitely beautiful buildings of centuries gone by, but avert your eyes quickly. At least some modern buildings manage to fit in, but by no means all. There really is no excuse for this facade. One of the few unspoiled corners, this is St. Florin's, built in 1100. The nearby 13th century Church of Our Lady, which looks fine from one angle, but from another angle... Now what is this? This kind of architecture does not belong on a medieval street layout. One of Koblenz's curiosities, a figure which, I am told, sticks his tongue out every half hour, but I wasn't prepared to wait. It's near this plaza, which isn't so bad, at least the proportions are roughly right. Just down the road, the Four Towers, four houses with historic aureoles. Now, I don't mind much that one of them is home to a Pizza Hut. It's not Koblenz's fault. The Pizza Hut logo looks cheap and gaudy. But it's on the same street as this, which is unforgivable. Oh, give it a pointy roof, it'll be practically invisible. A stone's throw away is this, which would just look uninspired, dull, functional and grey, except that it's opposite this ensemble, so it looks positively ugly. But even these well-preserved houses have been scarred by the addition of something that makes Pizza Hut seem tasteful. You can easily wreck a scene like this by giving it an office block. Or you can add something of about the right size, but give it a hideous colour scheme. Not that post-war decades were alone in their poor taste. This looks like a publicity still from Ghostbusters 3, uh, which, by the way, is due out in 2012. At least Jesuitenplatz is relatively intact, even if the preparations for the Christmas market do get in the way.